Okay. God bless you. My name is Carlos, and I would like to start a Bible studies about the book of Revelation. These Bible studies, we're going to be looking at the book of Revelation, getting familiar with the book, the purpose of the book, the author of the book, the time when the book was written, the location, the intended target, and the introduction to chapter 1. We're going to start by talking about the six sevens plus church. As a total, we'll make it seven. And the first one is the church letters that is located in chapter 2, verse 1, through chapter 3, verse 22. There are seven churches letters. Then we're going to be looking at the seals. That is located in chapter 4, verse 1, to chapter 8, verse 1. And there are seven seals. Then we're going to be looking at the seven trumpets. From chapter 8, verse 2, to chapter 11, verse 19. We're going to be looking also the seven personages. From chapter 12, verse 1, to chapter 14, and chapter 20. The seven vials or bowls, they are located in chapter 15, verse 1, and chapter 16, all the way down to verse 21. The seven dooms from chapter 17, verse 1, all the way down to chapter 20, verse 15. The seven new things in chapter 21, verse 1, all the way down to chapter 22, verse 21. In this book also, we're going to be looking at four great moments in where the apostle was taken, and he said it as in the spirit. That is in chapter 1, verse 10. We're going to be looking at this recently today actually later on chapter 4 verse 2 chapter 17 verse 3 chapter 21 verse 10 we're going to be looking at the parenthetical passages the parenthetical passages are as stated passages that have been given in a parenthesis they are in between two um sections it looks like they do not belong to that particular section but they've been inserted into and one of them is the first one is the jewish remnant that is in the book of revelation chapter 7 verse 4 through 8 it talks about the hundred and forty four thousand chosen ones from the sons of israel and these are only the sons of israel no other country no other people, no other nation. Will be 12,000 of each tribe. We're going to be looking at the great tribulation saints. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 17. He described it as a great multitude. Then we're going to be looking at the angel. This is in Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. This particular angel places his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. He's holding a little book open. Now, you need to keep in mind also that there is what is called the beast of the sea and the beast of the land. That has nothing to do, well, it has something to do, but it is not this relation. This is an angel that is holding a little book open and he put his right foot on the sea and the left foot on the land the seven peals of thunder the seven peals of thunder is very important and this is quite of a mystery that is located in the book of revelation chapter 10 verse 3 
and 4. Then we're going to be looking at the measuring of the temple, which is in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. When he talks about the measuring of the temple, he talks about measuring the temple, measuring the altar, and measuring the worshippers in it. Very interesting. We'll be looking in Revelation chapter 11, verse 3 and 4, the two witnesses. They've been identified in this particular book as the two olive trees or the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth. Many people have uh, conjectures that uh, is either uh, Moses or Enoch or Elijah or uh, Elisha or uh, whoever they want. All that I can say is that it identifies the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth. In regard to the Jewish remnant, it talks about being from the sons of Israel from the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes, in accordance with the Bible, sons of Jacob's, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Zachar, Zebulon, Joseph, Benjamin. Nevertheless, in the Jewish remnant, they are as follow Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh. Manasseh is the firstborn of Joseph who was taken to Egypt because he was sold by his brothers to merchants and in Egypt he was sent to jail and then from there he became to part of the Pharaoh's house as the second in command so he is he has two sons there that we know of he has probably had many more but he has two sons that were brought to Jacob Jacob blessed them and he took him as sons. So Manasseh is the firstborn of Joseph and he replaces Dan, the tribe of Dan, in the 144,000. In terms of the Great Tribulation Saints, verse 14 of chapter 7 in the book of Revelation says the following. And I said to him, this is John the Apostle, Sir, you know, and he's talking to an elder. And he said, the elder said to John, These are those coming out of the great tribulation. And they washed their robes and whetted them in the blood of the Lamb. So very interesting. These great tribulation saints they comes only from the great tribulation not from a simple event not from the beginning of time no, no, no. they are from the great tribulation times they also wash the robes through the blood of Jesus because the Bible specifically said that no one and I mean no one can go to the Father except through him in terms of the angel, in Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, as I mentioned before, the reader should notice that the position of the angel's feet that would be on the part, uh, on the sea, the right foot on the sea, the left foot on the land. And the evil forces as the beast from the sea and the beast from the land. Very interesting. Also, the seven peals of thunder is a mystery because the apostle is ordered to write everything with the only exception of what the seven peals of thunder expressed. He talks about them, but he doesn't talk or write about what they said. 
we are going to be seeing the Lord standing on Mount Zion. That's in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 through 5. And he talks about the 144,000 with him singing like a new song, a song they could only learn, only the 144,000. They were sealed with his name and the name of his father in front of the throne. The four living creatures and the elders are present. These 144,000, they are not defiled with women. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Purchased by the Lamb from among men. They are becoming the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. There is no life found on their lips and they are blameless. Then we find in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 8, the everlasting gospel. An, an angel flying in mid heaven, holding an everlasting gospel to proclaim, to proclaim to those dwelling on the earth. That term, dwelling on the earth, it means the ones that belong to earth. So this actually gospel, everlasting gospel, is a judgment gospel. And is for those that are on earth that have not been taken in the rapture, have not been killed due to uh, in the masses of uh, giving their lives for the Lord, or that are not part of the 144,000. Those ones that are belong to the earth, every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and every people we heard, we will hear the everlasting gospel. And he says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 7 saying in a great voice fear god and give glory to him because the hour of his judgment this is a judgment gospel has come also worship him worship him i'm sorry worship him who has made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the mountains of waters fountains of water the fountains of water the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to humanity is as follows. First, he is recognized as the King, the Messiah, to sit on the throne of King David. You see that in Psalm 2, Matthew 2, verse 2, the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 1 and 5, and 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and 24, verse 24. Then we also see the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ presenting Christ as the Savior of the humankind through his sacrifice in the cross shedding his blood and you can see that in John chapter 3 verse 16 through 17 then the judgment of the non-believer which is this one here not only to the non-believer but Satan his demonic forces hell and death then the gathering of the kings of the earth in Armageddon or Armageddon as many people know it that is in the book of Revelation chapter 16 verse 13 through 16 and it talks that this gathering uh, would be in this parenthetical passage it talks about that out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet one unclean spirit per each one out of the mouth of the dragon one out of the mouth of the beast one out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits three looking like frogs they are spirits of demons performing signs they will do great things but they're demons spirits of demons will deceive the leaders of the world and will gather them to war against God Almighty. They will deceive them because they will do wondrous things, amazing things. Now, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 through 6, we have the fourfold hallelujah. The first hallelujah proclaimed by a great multitude. The second hallelujah proclaimed by the same great multitude but the 24 elders 
and the four living creatures are present. They fell down to worship God who sit on his throne. God himself will proclaim the third hallelujah and the mighty peals of thunder proclaim the fourth hallelujah. I would like to go back to the gathering of the kings of the earth in Armageddon in Revelation 16 chapter 16 verse 13 through 16. Those three unclean spirits looking like frogs. Since a long time in history the devil has tried very hard and is actually achieving with many people that goal of infiltrating in the human kind in their mind that there is life out in the universe so they said and because of that they many of the people that have been uh, deceived by such they even identify the encounter of third type and they describe these beings as elongated faces elongated eyes either grays or green just like an amphibious looking like frogs so please if you're a believer rebuke whatever you see in the name and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke it because that's not belong on your world and in your heart also if you are you want to know more about the dragon the beast and the prophet the false prophet that is I have that particular image that I'm presenting right now in front of you about the dragon which is in Revelation chapter 12 and the beast out of the sea which is in Revelation chapter 13 and represent the political power and the beast out of this out of the earth which is in Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 and down which is the clerical power and of course the dwellers of the earth which they will adore the beast of the sea and that the beast of the earth will promote promote and that the dragon will give all the entire power that and domain that he has so if you want to be more aware of that look for this particular blog that I have on this blog and please print it and study it then we're going to be seeing the structure of the book of Revelation the main theme of the book is the Lord Jesus Christ and how is he revealed to his people when I mean his people I mean the Jewish people and the body of Christ in Revelation 1 19 stated that the Apostle John has been told to write the things thou hast seen that means before the revelation started that is life of the Jewish people ministry and life of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, on earth and in the beginning of all events after his ascending to heaven and his father of glory so the past the things which are is the moment in where the apostle was starting to have the prophetic revelation and after these things which is after the things that has seen and which are so the metatauta those are future events in the prophecy of the book of revelation the book of revelation was written by the apostle john who also wrote the gospel and the three letters he was writing the book at 96 after the death which is almost at the end of the first century after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ the theme is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ the structure of the chapter the prologue which is a uh, revelation chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 he revealed the revelation of Jesus Christ which God himself gave to Jesus Christ his son 
to show to his slaves, followers of the way, you and I, the followers of the way, before the third, fourth century, more or less, when in Antioch was changed the name from followers of the way to Christians. We were known as followers of the way because Jesus Christ himself uh, identified himself as the way to show to his slaves us things which must occur quickly one behind the other that's what it says quickly one sometimes one of them is not even finished when the other one is right there Jesus Christ signified them because in our limited mind we cannot understand it if he didn't make a sign of them if, if he didn't make him sign signals then we would never notice them or see them then he sent them through his angel a messenger but not a human messenger this is a spiritual messenger this is not John this is a, a messenger spiritual messenger to John was sent through his angel to John the Apostle his slave who testify John the Apostle testify of the Word of God and the witness of Jesus Christ he is a witness of Jesus Christ even as many things as he John the Apostle saw the revelation presented in threefold is the dimension of time Revelation 1 chapter 1 verse 19 what things you saw what things are what things are about to occur after these things after what you saw, what are, those are the things of Metatauta. Spiritual dimension. The seven assemblies, chapter 1, verse 9, and chapter 2 to chapter 3. The tribulation, chapter 4, verse 1, chapter 19, verse 21. The kingdom, chapter 20. Verse 1 to 15. Then the dimensions of Jesus Christ's offices, which is to be and how he is a high priest, chapter 8, verse 3 to 6. Bridegroom, chapter 19, verse 7 through 9. And from King and Judge, chapter 20, verse 1 through 15. Now, this is a book that talks about having a special blessing. All the Bible is a special blessing for all the believers and for whoever listened to it. But this particular book of the Bible has the audacity to express a special blessing, but is as follows. Is blessed in Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 it says, Bless is, first of all, the one reading is a single person and everybody knows that because everybody is listening oh you have the blessing if you read the book of Revelation great amazing amen praise the Lord what they don't understand is more so more than that because you not only get the blessings for reading it but you can bless others by reading it because he says and those Hearing is plural term. So one read, many will hear, as you are doing now. The word of it, of this singular prophecy, is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And keeping these things, the, the one that you are reading, unto and for the time is near that is the important thing having been reading the things you must keep the things because the time is near the greeting of the seven assemblies in Revelation chapter 1 verse 4 there is a salutation John to the seven assemblies in Asia and he expressed to them grace to you and peace so grace is a term that when it was translated from the Aramaic to the Greek and the Greek to our language 
he was directed from directly to the Gentile public because we're saved by grace. And he, when he talk, talks about uh, peace to you, it's a term that is utilized directly to the Jew because he received peace from Heavenly Father. The introduction of the one who is present, who was past, and who is coming. So who is, is the present, who was the past, and who is coming, future. God does not have, he does not have part on the dimension of time. He created the dimension of time for us. He is out of any dimension. He's far beyond of that. Keep that always in mind. You're going to be seeing the seven spirits. And these seven spirits are before the throne of God. Now, you will say seven spirits. Yeah. To understand the seven spirits, you must refer to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Let me put it up for you over here. In the New Testament, we have the blessing under the grace that we have the fold Holy Spirit. We have the blessing full of the Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament, that was not so. They have what is called the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 expresses it very clearly. And it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Seven. So it will rest upon the person or and the Spirit will give him wisdom and or understanding and or counsel and or might and or knowledge and or fear of the Lord. But today in the grace we have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. In Revelation 1, chapter 1, verse 5 through 7, we're going to be seeing the titles of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the faithful witness, he's the firstborn out of the dead, and he's the ruler of all kings of the earth. He's going to be sitting on the throne of David, his father. We're going to be seeing the, his merciful actions, loving us, washing us from our sins, plural, by his blood, and he made us kings and priests to God even his father, kings and priests. We'll see these terms, by the way, later on. In Melchizedek. Now, to him will be glory and might forever and ever. In other words, no, he doesn't have dimensions of time. He created the time. He created the dimensions. He's above of any dimension. Prophecy of the Lord's return. You can read also about this in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, the book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, and the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, you see how the Lord identified himself. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. In the Greek version, the Alpha symbol is spelled out, but in the place of Omega, there is no spelled out is a symbol of Omega in the strong words or strong symbols is with a number G5598. So if you read this, uh, the book of Revelation in Greek, you will see the Alpha spelled out. But the word Omega is a symbol. Well, read Isaiah 44.6. And let me explain you briefly what my my point of view on this is, there are conjectures about it, but this is mine, and is that Alpha, we already know the beginning. We know how the Lord created the earth, the universe, the uh, humankind, and everything that we know of, all kinds of things and all the dimensions. We know that. It's in the, it's in the Bible. We can tell. We, we read it. We see it from the little things to the most complicated ones. Even though we read also about the end times, 
because he has not taken action yet. He cannot spell out until is consummated or done. Until then, he will still be a symbol. Then you will see the beginning and the ending that you can also read about in the book of John 1, chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, the beginning and the ending. He is the Lord of all dimensions, which is, which was, which is to come. He is the Almighty. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, it talks about the vision of the Son of Man. That was the title given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he talks also that John is exiled due to the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, so he was exiled to Patmos. And his introduction is clear and without blemish, with a purpose to be um, properly and unequivocally identified by the reader as the legitimate author, not just of the book but also witness of the vision the mission was the Roman ruler he ruled from AD 54 to AD 96 which is after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and at the end of his uh, ruling he exiled the Apostle John to Patmos this of course the New Test the um, book of Revelation is the last book of the New Testament. Nevertheless, you must understand that in this book, there are seven letters written by uh, John, but dictated by the Jesus Christ himself, which are the seven letters to the assemblies. Keep that in mind. In Revelation 1 through 10, one, uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 10, this is one of the four verses in the book that the Apostle indicated the fact that he is in the Spirit. Behind him, a great voice as a trumpet. So he is listening a, a voice behind him. And in Revelation, verse 1, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 11, the Lord Jesus Christ himself identified as the Alpha and the Omega, once again, Omega as a symbol, the first and the last. The Apostle is instructed to write in a scroll whatever he sees. But there is an exception to this command. That is the seven thunders in Revelation 10, 4. This scroll will be sent to the seven assemblies of Asia, which today, by the way, is Turkey. That will be chapter 2 and chapter 3. The seven assemblies are Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Athera, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. These seven assemblies have fourfold applications. One is local. They were actual local active assemblies at the time of the writings. They really existed. They admonitory their spiritual condition in the sight of the Lord of Heaven. How they thought that they were doing versus how they really were doing in accordance with the eyes of the Lord. Then is the personal application. In the exhortation of each letter, you will see the to whom or to him that hath an ear and to him that overcome. You have an ear. So we need to put that exhortation as a personal use. These letters. And then we see the application of a prophetic application. A disclosure of the seven phases that the assembly will go through in human history, in the timeline of the human history. There is, it is very important to notice the order of the mentions assemblies here. If it wasn't because this order, it would never happen. Otherwise, if you change any of this assembly's order in any way, shape, or form, then it will not coincide with the history of the church. But because they are in this order, that's how they spell and talk 
about the history of the church in the human timeline. They are identified also these seven assemblies as the seven golden lampstand. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 12 through 18, the apostle described in his vision the Son of Man and the seven golden lampstand, which are the seven assemblies. When he talks about the Son of Man, he also describes very detailed the clothing of the Son of Man. When does the description he gives you as the highest position of the priesthood? Christ is from the priesthood of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a figure that was the first king of Salem. Salem was Jerusalem, later on known as Jerusalem. You can see that in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 through 19. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, paid tenth of all tidings. In other words, he paid a tidings to Abraham. He came, he met Abraham on the valley of Shaven, which translated is the kings of Kings Valley. And he paid him to Abraham a tidings. The tenth. Melchizedek was also not just a king, he was also a priest. Priest of God Most High. That would be seen in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 and 19, and also in Psalm 110, verse 4. So, Jesus Christ is an everlasting priesthood. That would be in Hebrew chapter 5, verse 6 and 10, chapter 6 and 20, chapter 6, verse 20, and chapter 7, verse 1. At the location of the valley, which was, as I said before, is the Shevan, which is the king's valley, Melchizedek brought out for Abraham bread and wine. If you correlate this with 1 Corinthians, Chapter 11, verse 23 and 26. Imagine. All his clothes of the Lord Jesus Christ described here by the Apostle. And each one of them has an indication and declared judgment. In his right hand, the Lord was having seven stars. These seven stars, we'll see the meaning later. Which, by the way, I just, it, it were the seven messengers, seven angels. And he says, sharp double edged sword coming out of his mouth. We know exactly that the sharp double edged sword was the word of truth, his gospel of salvation. Verses 17 and 18 is described as how the human limited mind and body of the Apostle could not hold the supremacy of the Lord and Savior. He described as he was dead, sinful humanity limitation. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, put his right hand on the Apostle, giving him the strength needed. The Lord expressed once again who he is. I am the first and the last, the living one became dead. He is the only living God. He made himself the only living God, made himself human to die in the cross. He became dead. Look at the bird. Became. He himself became dead. He has that power. He shed the blood and he paid the debt. Yours and mine. And behold, I am living forever and ever because he has no dimension of time. He's God. Amen. And he says, I, Jesus, the Lord and Savior, have the keys to Hades and of death. Hades and death. He has the keys for them. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, the apostle is ordered to write the following. What things you saw, which is the past time, what things are, which is the present time, 
what things are about to occur after these things with things the things that he saw and the things which are those things after that which is future time moment it's for us to know not for the god not for god our lord god jesus christ because he is not on the any kind of limitations on the human clock this future or time or moment is right at after it's right after uh, the once the moment of the seven assemblies in chapter 2 starts it's right there so chapter 2 and chapter 3 it's the seven golden lampstands the seven stars let's go back to the seven stars seven angels these are messengers not human messengers of the almighty one these are messengers angelical messengers of the almighty one these are not human these are not pastors ministers and so on at the human level and as known by members of their respective assemblies on earth no matter what they tell you no humans at all are these stars we are all equal in the eyes of the Lord there is nobody in the assembly in the body of Christ here on earth that has the capacity of being a star hold by the Lord God to bring that message no that is on the spiritual realm because as we can see each and angels have their particular job they have their specific job to do and the skills to do it and these seven messengers seven stars they have those particular job to do they know their their assembly they know where they were they know how to get there they know how to deliver the message they were angels of the spiritual realm of God you can read by the way in terms of the quality but don't confuse this by the way with the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit some are teachers some are pastors some are whatever they are but remember those are for us here to provide support knowledge and to provide a structural um, body to the assembly but not because no one is better than anyone else's now read John 13 33 Matthew 18 1 through 6 the book of the Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 through 6 the book of the Colossians chapter 4 verse 1 through 6 and you will understand a little bit better in that matter now the final destination this is the most important part of on all this the destination of the humankind after his or her first or second death male or female whatever you are when you were created you were created by God and you were given a body a spirit and a soul okay you were created from the dust from the um, from the ground you were mold and God gives you the breath of life, the spirit. And then, as you were growing in this dimension of humankind, you also molded your own soul. Now, once you die, or out of these limitations, you, your body will die dust to dust, the Bible says. The body goes to the grave. Okay? That body is going to be consumed and going to the grave. The spirit is separated from the body. And when the spirit is separated from the body, that becomes the first death. When the spirit and the soul are separated, then that is known as the second death. The soul will be ready to take possession 
of the glorified body at resurrection. But that would be for either heaven or hell. Now, in Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, the Bible speaks and talks about the dragon, the serpent, excuse me, serpent of old. That's the one that we read in the book of Genesis in terms of the uh, Garden of Eden. The devil and Satan. They are the same entity. We are reading about the false prophet. And we're reading about the beast. Those are three different entities. Now. And then we're reading about death. So let's read in Revelation chapter 20. Verse 13 and 14. And he says. And the sea gave up the dead in it. And the dead. And Hades. Hades is hell. Gave up the dead in them once again the sea gave up their dead death and Hades gave up the dead in them and they were each each individually judged according to their works when you are in Jesus Christ you are judged through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in other words, you are saved, and only through the blood of my Lord, my Lord and Savior, is the only way that you will be saved from judgment. But if you are not, and you haven't given your heart to the Lord, and your soul to the only living God, Jesus Christ, publicly, as the Bible stated, then you will be judged according to your works. And in verse 14 says, and death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So, you are, once you take that possession of the glorified body, if you're going to either hell or heaven, if you're going to hell, that is your second death. So, don't wait for you to have a second death when you can give yourself salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ which is free by just you saying yes I accept my Lord as my Savior raise your hand wherever you are so let's make a prayer at this very moment and I ask the Lord in prayer, my Lord Jesus Christ, pray with me, my dear friend. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to be wherever this voice is reaching. That you, oh my Lord, as you have done with me, you have been giving us the knowledge of the gospel of salvation. And thank you for your sacrifice in a cross. And thank you for giving us the privilege to hear the voice of the gospel. Allow us, O oh Lord, that we can recognize in us the limitations and the impurities also. That sin that exists in us. That would be cleansed right now by us accepting your Holy Spirit in our heart. And be cleansed and safe. For and prepared for the encounter that we're going to have with you. Not because we are afraid of hell. No but because we love you as you loved us. So, my Lord, bless those that are hearing these Bible studies. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, my Lord and Savior, to my praise, I ask you all this, my Lord and Savior. Hashinahi Adonai. Amen. God bless you, my dear friend. 